Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings and I am out in the trial gardens here at Walters Gardens today. And I just wanted to take you through a walk, um, a walk through the gardens and just show you some of the beautiful proven winter varieties that are blooming right now. Um, so this trial garden here is just packed full of beautiful plants, all perennials. And the particular garden I'm looking at right now are all, um, all proven winter varieties. So we're gonna start off with the Dicentra Pink Diamonds. And I'm gonna try to stand back a little bit just so you can see size perspective here in the garden as far as how big these plants look in relation with other plants. So Dicentra Pink Diamonds is a full sun Dicentra. This is a grouping here of three plants. And this thing has been in bloom ever since sometime early May. And it's just nonstop. It's July right now. And you can just see the full coverage of flowers this plant has. It's got a nice blue green foliage. And I would say these are about 18 inches tall or so. The foliage mound is about 12 inches. And then the flowers make it upwards of 18 inches. In this front corner here is Heuchera Dolce Wildberry. And we'll go in for a closer look here. Beautiful glossy purple foliage, nicely ruffled edges. And this is a heuchera that can be grown in full sun or part shade. And I think it's the foliage on this is really quite stunning. In the back, I'm gonna also talk about ones that are out of bloom too, because you can see how big they get or how big they've gotten. Um, they may not be in color now, but at least you can see the plant. Um, so back here is the Cloudburst Phlox. And this here is another grouping of probably three to five plants. And it still has a little bit of blooms going on, but this one was blooming about a month ago. So that was blooming in June. This here is the Magic Show Wizard of Oz, Veronica. And again, done flowering, but you can see the height here. It's about 12 to 18 inches tall. And this is one too, I think if you gave it a light shearing, you might be able to get a little bit of rebloom on it. Up in the front is the ground cover Phlox. This is the Sedum Yellow Brick Road. And there's not a lot of color going on right now, but you can see in the picture, there's a nice little hue of yellow. And this one's only about three inches tall, so not very tall at all. And each of those mounds is about 12 inches wide. Behind it is the Heuchera Primo Peachberry Ice. Beautiful peach colored Heuchera. And we'll go in and show you the foliage a little bit closer. So if you're kind of looking for a peach uh, or a pop of kind of a peachy burgundy, this definitely is going to be the Heuchera for you. Again, this garden is all full sun. So every plant you're seeing here can be grown in full sun. Although many of what you're seeing also can be grown in a part shade location. Uh, behind it is the Salvia Perfect Perfusion. That's kind of a light lavender color salvia. And this one here looks like it has been trimmed back and I can see lots of buds that will um, give this plant a secondary bloom. So that will be blooming again here shortly. That plant is about 12 inches tall and about 12 to 18 inches wide. In the background there are the beautiful Nephophia and there's three different varieties here and you can see these three varieties are all very um, the height are all very similar on the back there you see a tall yellow one i'll hit that one when we get to that side of the garden uh, but these here uh, up front here that orange and yellow is backdraft the or the orange one this is orange blaze and the one in the background is i believe that's hot and cold so again, you can see the colors side by side just to see the different colorations and what they look like when planted together. And those are about two to three foot tall. This big mound here is a mound of the Rock and Grow Bundle of Joy Sedum. There's probably four or five plants here in this bundle, so don't, not one plant's gonna get that big. This is a grouping. And again, sedum is a fall bloomer, late summer bloomer. So this is going to have flowers on it, you know, later color in the garden. Um, but again, size, this is about 24 inches tall and about 24 inches wide. Tucked in the back there, you're seeing some really dark foliage. When we head around to the other side, I'll let you know exactly which plant that is. But that is a hardy hibiscus. And um, like I said, when we get to the other side, I'll tell you what variety it is, because I'll be able to see the tag better there. Uh, we have this pink. This is the Veronica Pink Potion. 
and that's still blooming. And I think if that got a little bit of a light shear, that's gonna give a rebloom also. That's about 12 to 18 inches tall. Up front, we have the Heuchera Dolce Cherry Truffles. And that's a very deep kind of a burgundy color. Just a little hue of red there. And again, look at the beautiful ruffled edges on that. I think that's a really pretty texture to add to the garden. Here we have the Sedum Rockin', uh, Rockin' Girl Pure Joy. This one is just starting to bloom and you can see that one's got like almost white colored flowers. Again, Sedum are a nice plant for drought tolerant, or they're drought tolerant, so if you have an area that um, is dry, Sedum definitely is a good choice there. In the background, that almost looks like a shrub, but it's not. That is the Amsonia storm cloud. That's a beautiful spring bloomer. When it starts to emerge, it's got almost black foliage, and then it gets beautiful periwinkle blue flowers in the spring. Um, but right now you can see it's just kind of a nice little foliage looking uh, perennial that almost is about the size of a shrub because that's about three foot tall and three foot wide. Next to it, the green foliage you're seeing that also kind of looks more like a shrub habit. That is a hardy hibiscus. That is the ballet slippers, not blooming yet, but that is about four foot tall. We'll back up again. And uh, opening act blush <clears throat> is the front here. Done blooming. That was a plant that was blooming more in May. Very beautiful. Um, and that's about 18 to 24 inches tall. And again, it's a large grouping, so there's several plants there. In the background, we have daylilies, and this deep, deep purple one is Nasiferatu. I probably massacred the word, but deep purple, really beautiful. Next to it is the peony, um, Shilom peony display, and we'll go in and take a closer look. It's kind of a nice peach colored daylily, double. Kind of a unique texture to add to the daylily family. Behind it, that deep foliage, that is cherry chocolate, uh, hardy hibiscus, and it's got tons of buds. So I would say in another couple weeks, maybe three weeks, that'll be blooming those huge dinner plate size blooms. Next to it is a Baptisia. This particular one is the strawberry, or not strawberry, but pink truffles. And that plant is about three foot tall, maybe 40 inches tall. And what you're seeing on there are the seed pods. So that's what's left after it's done blooming. Um, again, spring bloomer, but when it's done, it has kind of a nice, nice shape to it, kind of a vase shape habit, and a nice filler for areas uh, towards the back of the garden. Tiger swirl daylily is blooming, and that is a huge flower. It's probably about five to six inches across, and you can just see all the buds on that. I like that bright burgundy eye and it's a taller daylily. So this one is about three foot tall. You can see it's just about as tall as that Baptisia there next to it. Pardon my purple Monarda is finished blooming, but we'll go in and take a look because there are a couple flowers left that will give you a little idea. These are, you know, on their way out, but you can see the beautiful color. Pardon my purple, like I said, it is a Monarda and a lot of people get scared when they think Monarda because a lot of varieties of Monarda they, they really blow up in a garden and, and kind of can be invasive. But you can see here, this is a grouping of three and they've been in this garden for at least three years and they're staying pretty much right to where they originally planted. The clump's getting a little bit bigger, but nothing that I would call invasive or crazy. And that's true of all the Monarda in the Proven Winter uh, family. Here's part in my pink Monarda. And again, this one is blooming, but it's on the, the downward end of the bloom. And again, three plants. These are about 24 inches tall. And you can tell they're not, they're not spreading. The clump is getting slightly larger, but nothing that is crazy as far as spreading in the garden. In front of it is uh, Dianthus Fruit Punch Cherry Vanilla. And you can tell this is done blooming, but I'm gonna go in and just show you. Look at all those spent blooms. This was just loaded with flowers when it was blooming. And I think if we gave this plant a light trim back, I'm not gonna do it, this isn't my garden, but if we gave this plant a light trim that we would see some, um, not, as, not as prolific of a rebloom, but we would get a little bit of rebloom going on there. 
lots of color in the cone flowers. So this is the Lakota Fire cone flower. And you're probably noticing in the picture there is a little bit of variation in color. And that is true for the Lakota Fire. You're going to have orange and kind of red shades. Um, the one in the middle there you can see is a little bit more red, where the ones on the outer, uh, there's three of them here, the outer ones are a little bit more orange. They're about 24 inches tall and 24 inches wide, and I just love that bold pop of color. Standing behind it is the Stand By Me Clematis. There's a few blooms left in there, and I'll go in and show you them. They're not your typical clematis bloom. They're just cute little cup that open up type look. And, but I'll show you, even when they're done blooming, it's really pretty. So they stand by me, you'll notice they are in kind of a, they're, they're in a trellis, but they're in a trellis. And that's because this isn't a cling type clematis. This is one that does need a little bit of support. So whether it be a trellis or planting it by other plants that will hold it up, both would be a good idea to keep this plant from falling and sprawling. It's about three foot tall. And you can see it was just covered with blooms when it was blooming. Next to it there is the grass. That's the Apache rose grass. It's just starting to put on flower at the top. You probably can't even see it in the picture, but there's just a few little tufts of, of um, the seed head starting. And I would say that's about four foot tall. And right now it's about four foot wide as well. Penstemon Midnight Masquerade. This was blooming earlier in the season, um, but you can see even with the spent blooms, it still looks kind of pretty with just those little seed pods on top. It's got beautiful dark foliage. You can see there's kind of a burgundy black color there. And again, this is the Midnight Masquerade Penstemon. Next to it, we have more daylilies. Primal Scream is the orange one really large flowers they open up really nicely and in front of it here is going bananas going bananas is a repeat blooming daylily so that one will bloom throughout the summer in front of going bananas is the heuchera dolce spearmint and we'll go in for a closer look there this gets pink flowers on it they're pretty much done now uh, but we'll look at the foliage it's a beautiful green foliage with a silver overlay and again, very compact. These can be grown in full sun to part shade locations. In the back there is another one of the hardy hibiscus and that one is Perfect Storm. You can see it's got that beautiful dark black foliage. It's gonna have, um, Perfect Storm has kind of pinky white flowers, kind of a two-tone flower once it blooms. But again, that's about three weeks out, but you can see how beautiful that foliage is even when it's not flowering. Planted in front of Perfect Storm is the Dianthus Paint the Town Magenta. Now this is a grouping. There's, if I had to guess, it looks like six or seven plants here, and it's just about done flowering. But let me go in and show you the flowers that are here. They're a little bit smaller flower, but you can see all those spent blooms that it was just loaded with color when it was blooming. So there's a lot of uh, different colors in the Paint the Town series. So if magenta isn't your color, maybe one of the other Paint the Towns would be. All right, so we're getting into a newer part of this bed. So these plants aren't quite as mature as the ones we've just been seeing, but these are also newer varieties. So they've been planted probably this year. Um, in the back there, a coneflower that is frankly scarlet. It's a beautiful red coneflower. And again, what you're seeing here isn't going to be the full size plant. These were just planted from probably a one gallon size container, but at least we're able to see a little bit the color of what these new plants look like. Up here is the Flax Opening Act Ultra Pink. Pretty much done blooming, but there are a few blooms, so let's go in. This is like one of my favorite of their tall flax in the Opening Act series. It's so bright and the color just really pops from a distance. Again, I wanna point out this is not their full size height. These are just planted from a gallon size container. Dianthus Paint the Town Fuchsia. Um, here's a grouping of five, and we'll go in and take a closer look at fuchsia. There's a couple blooms left. It's almost done blooming, but you can at least see the flowers. So this is a very compact dianthus. You can see it's got um, quite a dense, almost grass-like foliage, 
and then it's just covered with flowers when it's in full bloom. It's really beautiful. Behind it is a Russian sage. This is called Sage Advice. And this one is I'm trying to figure out if it's just starting or just ending blooming. I think it's towards the end of its bloom, but you can at least kind of see a little bit of that purple there. And also that nice silvery green foliage is really pretty. I do believe this one is about full size at about 18 to 24 inches, um, but you might want to double check that on our website. But yeah, sage is just kind of one of those plants that the foliage kind of shimmers, the flowers shimmer. It's not always a super bold plant, but it, it has really soft coloration that it adds to the garden. Here we have the Penstemon Lemon Squeeze, and that is the color. It is supposed to be yellow. It doesn't need fertilizer, uh, and I think that's really pretty. I just love how that yellowy foliage really pops against many of the other colors here in the garden. Um, that plant, I, it's very new, so I don't, I can't tell you how tall it gets when it's mature. Um, if I had to guess though, I think that's one that gets about two to three foot tall. So we'll have to watch and see as I learn more about that plant. In the back there is the Phlox uh, Ultraviolet, and it's a beautiful deep purple color. And that one is about an 18 to 24 inch Phlox that also gets about that, that much of a spread. I just love that deep purple. I love how that pops here in this garden. Here is some more salvia. This one is crystal blue and it's done blooming, but you can see how short it is. Here it's probably only about eight to 10 inches. They've trimmed the flowers back. So maybe they'll get a little bit of a light rebloom, hopefully. Um, a lot of these plants, if you trim them, you will get a secondary bloom. So don't be afraid to trim your plants back. Uh, because number one, they look kind of, some of them look kind of eh when they need to be deadheaded. And if you can, you know, trim them and cut them back and get additional flowers, that's always really fun. This here is uh, oregano, it's drops of Jupiter. And you can see here how this one has kind of that light green foliage. Not a lot of flower going on right now, but let's go in and look at what we do have. I really like this plant's foliage because it pops. It's not that deep green like a lot of the other foliage in the garden. It's nice and bright. So I think that even when it's not flowering, just the foliage color is really stunning. And those plants there, I would say, they're probably not mature, but I would say it's a pretty good indication of about how big they're gonna get in your garden. Behind it is uh, the Jacob's Ladder, or um, Polymonium Heaven Scent. And look at that beautiful kind of fern like foliage. This is a spring blooming plant, so it's not flowering now, but you can at least see the, uh, the foliage on it. And I just love the texture that that brings to the garden. I'm gonna give you just kind of a full view of where I stand now and what the garden looks like here. Up front are more of the Paint the Town series of Dianthus. And this is Paint the Town Red. We'll go in and see, they're almost done blooming, but let's take a peek at what the flower looks like. Really pretty. You can see how many flowers there were when it was in its prime. As we take the corner here, we have Veronica White Wands, which was a spring bloomer, done blooming now. But you can kind of see how tall that is, about 12 to 18 inches. Behind it is the Phlox Opalescence. We'll go in and take a closer look at that. A beautiful light pink flower, large flower heads. It's really pretty. Dianthus Raspberry Ruffles. This is done blooming, but you can see how tall it is. Very compact mounding type habit. Behind it is the Salvia back to the fuchsia, and that's about 10 inches tall, trimmed back because it's already done blooming. Um, but again, might get some secondary blooms there. In front of it is the Veronica Purple Illusion, which is also done flowering, but that's only about 10 to 12 inches tall. All right, we're gonna take the corner here and see what other plants are on the other side of the garden. Paint the town fancy. So this is compact like the other painted towns, but we'll go in and look at this flower. It's got the serrated edges 
and it's uh, a two-tone. So that's really pretty. Opening act pink -a dot that is finished flowering. Um, but I'm going to go in and show you the little flower that I do see so you can see the color of this plant. It's really soft pink with kind of a dark eye. This is a brand new hibiscus for 2021 French vanilla. So I'm excited to come back to see what that looks like when it's blooming. It's kind of a creamy white flower, I believe, with a red center. So I'll be excited to see that once it's in its flowering stages. Echinacea, the price is white. So this is a new echinacea for 2021 as well. Let's go in and take a peek. And again, these are just planted, so they're not full size, but at least you can kind of see what the flowers look like. Really large cones, large yellow cones, and kind of a creamy, it's more white than creamy, but a little bit of a creamy white flower. Those are more Stand By Me Clematis. And you can tell those are just planted because they're not as tall as the other ones we saw earlier. Um, those again, they get three foot tall. But that just shows you, you know, the first year of planting, things aren't going to be full grown. You know, you can never have an instant garden. You got to give things time. And giving those time, they'll get up to three foot tall. Here's another uh, hardy hibiscus that's new. It's called Hibiscus spinderella. And again, you can tell it's short. It's going to get taller as it matures. Pretty much what I want to show you here is that nice dark foliage. And that's a pink and white kind of a swirl looking plant. So I'm excited to watch that one bloom as well. More of the beautiful daylilies. This here is Orange Smoothie. Orange Smoothie is a reblooming daylily and it's about 24 inches tall or so. Let's go in and take a closer look. Kind of a, it's a bicolor, but it's got a really soft eye on it. And I think that's really pretty. The flowers are a little bit smaller than what some of the other uh, daylily flowers are. But again, it's the rebloomer. And I think that typically on the reblooming daylilies, they do have a little bit smaller flower. Behind it is one of my personal favorites. It's Storm Shelter. And you can see all those buds. Let's go in for a closer look at the bloom. This is kind of my favorite color. Super large burgundy eye, kind of a lemony yellow center and then a rosy, uh, rosy pink edge. And then it's also ruffled. And you can see the edges have kind of that same burgundy um, color carried out to the edges. So this one is Storm Shelter. Tucked in the back here, kind of hiding away, is the Heliopsis Tuscan Sun. Um, actually, it's not Tuscan Sun. This one's Tuscan Gold. Tuscan Sun is a little bit more of a singular flower, where Tuscan Gold is a little bit more of a double type of a flower look on it. All right, I'm gonna back out of this garden here. Here's an ornamental grass, Panicum Cheyenne Sky. You can see how it's got beautiful little burgundy um, tips on it. A nice airy grass. It's just starting to send up its plumes. You can kind of see them tucked in there. Uh, this grass here is about three foot tall, so it's fairly compact. Here we've got some salvia violet profusion. These were trimmed back. And you can see now how they're starting to do their secondary bloom. So that's kind of fun to see. Not as prolific as the first, but hey, any extra flowers are bonus flowers in my opinion. All right, this large hardy hibiscus is very awesome. And that one's got to a little bit of the burgundy tinge to it. Not as burgundy as some of them. Um, but it does have that deep coloration and I think that's really pretty. Let's back out a little bit here. Uh, so the sedum you're seeing there in front of those white lucanthemum, that is the rock and grow pop star sedum. That's gonna be more of a fall bloomer, late summer to fall bloomer. Uh, but the foliage on that is really pretty even when it's not in flower. It's got kind of hues of kind of a silvery blue and burgundy. It's about 12 to 18 inches tall. And this I'm sure is a grouping of probably four or five plants. So you can see it's quite a large uh, mound, but that is several plants planted together. Behind that is the Leucanthemum Daisy May. And this was in its prime about a week to 10 days ago. But you can tell 
what a full coverage plant this is. So this plant, you couldn't see any green at one point when it was in its glory. And you can tell that even with some of these spent blooms, just how much full coverage this plant has. Uh, so this is one, if it were in my garden, I'd go ahead and trim it back and hope to see if I could get some secondary blooms later on in the season as well. Planted behind Daisy May is a Baptisia. This is Sparkling Sapphires, and it's about 36 inches tall. Again, spring bloomer, so it's um, done, but you can see the beautiful seed pods on there, and I think that looks kind of pretty, just leaving them on as well. Planted behind that, that is Heliopsis Tuscan Sun. One thing I do want to show you with Heliopsis Tuscan Sun is it is a little bit of an aphid magnet, um, so you might need to treat for it. But let me just go in and show you. They're red aphids and they are just clinging to that plant. Even though it's got aphids, it's still doing really, really nicely. I mean, it's flowering beautifully. The foliage looks good. Uh, but if, if that's something that bothers you, um, keep in mind that you might have the aphids with that plant. Up front here is a Proskia Russian Sage. This is denim and lace. This is one of the most popular selling plants on our website right now. Uh, it's not blooming, but you can still see the beautiful structure of this plant and the nice silvery stalks look really pretty. Behind it is the hardy hibiscus. This is the one I told you almost in the beginning of the video. I'll let you know what it is when we get to the other side of the garden. This is cranberry crush. So cranberry crush is about four foot tall and it's pretty much green, but it does have a little bit of tinge of the burgundy on it. Uh, but definitely not as much as, say, the one over there. That is very, very dark. And I believe that one was ballet slippers when we were over there earlier. Here's a large grouping of the Baptisia. And again, they're all done flowering. But you can see there's a little bit of differentiation, or I'm trying to use big words here. There's a little bit of difference in the height of these plants. So the one in the back, that is a deluxe a deluxe, um, one of the deluxe ones, and these ones in the front are just kind of the regular ones. So the deluxe get just a little bit bigger than the regular decadence, and you can definitely see that in this picture. And by bigger, I'd say probably about 12 inches bigger. Cat's Meow Nepeta, this was blooming this spring and was absolutely a showstopper. This is a plant where you trim it back and you get more blooms, and it looks like they have recently trimmed this back and so we're going to be getting more flowers. Um, it must have been fairly recently because I'm not seeing the buds yet, but this is a plant you can keep blooming all summer if you continue to shear it back when it's done blooming. Here we have the ruby spider daylily, really bold color of the red and the white together. And ruby spider is a really prolific bloomer. This one has probably been blooming for about three weeks now. There's still a lot of buds on it. You can see all the flowers that are currently blooming. And again, it's one that really pops out in the garden, I think because of that big flower and the nice bicolor blooms. Up front is the Salvia Violet Riot. These were trimmed back. And looky here, they've got more buds. So this one will be blooming again probably in the next couple weeks. Very compact, only about 12 inches tall. In the back tucked in there is the Sedum Rock and Grow Lemon Jade. So this is a green sedum, and the flowers are also kind of a yellow-green color. So very monochromatic, which is really cool in, in certain gardens. So if you're looking for a sedum that doesn't add a lot of color, but is really neat looking, consider giving the lemon jade a try. Tucked in there in the middle is the grass. This is the Prairie Winds Desert Plains grass, and that plant's about three foot tall. Hasn't started to send up its plumes yet, but that will happen later on in the summer. Up front here is the opening act white phlox, spring bloomer, finished flowering now, but it's about 18 inches tall, and that's a grouping of about three plants. More color, this is the Leucanthemum banana cream, and in front of it is the Monarda Let's see if I can tell what Monarda it is. Monarda, pardon my lavender, which again, it's done flowering, but that's about 12 to 18 inches tall. And behind it is the banana cream. And most of these are at the lightest stage right now because this plant goes through a transition 
When it first starts to open, the flowers are butter yellow. Here's some I can show you. So they're a little bit more buttery yellow. And then they lighten up a little bit. And then as the flowers are just about to their end of their cycle, they're going to be more white. So you'll get a little variation of color on your banana creams, just depending on what stage the flowers are in. In the back there is a Nephophia, and this one here is the Nephophia Flashpoint, which is all yellow. This one is taller than the others. You can see they're in the background there. Uh, this one's about, about four foot tall, so definitely one of the taller ones in the series. Nephophia pair really nice with like grasses or daylilies. They kind of have that same look. So even when they're not flowering, that foliage is nice and airy and really pretty. Up front is the Color, Spy Color Spears Pink Dawn. And this one had been trimmed back and now it's getting a little bit more um, secondary blooms on it. And this plant here is a little bit taller. This is more about 18 to 24 inches tall. So we're gonna right back where we started there with the Pink Diamond Dianthus. I'll go ahead and show you this garden from a distance. Again, a lot of your favorite Proven Winter varieties. This is just a snippet in time. It's mid-July. So this is what's blooming mid-July. Earlier in the season, this garden looked just totally different than what it currently looks like now. And that's the beauty with perennials. You can have a totally different looking garden um, just based off of what blooms when. So be sure when you're planting that you're thinking of bloom time because you don't want a garden to just be beautiful at one point in the season. You want it to be a garden that gives you color from early spring well into the fall and with the proven winter perennials there's so much to offer that you can have an absolutely beautiful garden from early spring into the fall this is heidi from garden crossings